today we're doing another Reviews in a Flash, and this time we are talking about Centipede. Brought to us by Dynamite! So, I'm sure they don't appreciate me saying it like that. <laughs> Centipede, $19.99 is the retail price of this, and yes, it is published by Dynamite Studios with Atari. That is right. It's based loosely, awesome. loosely, okay. loosely based on the Atari game. And honestly, you know, Dynamite's really good about bringing different properties into comic book form, where mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just books that are based off the subject matter, but obviously aren't strictly following yeah, this it. Has because it. Monsters Attacks, which is also published by Dynamite, is a knockout, you know? And I think I feel the same way about this. This was my first Atari uh, comic book that I've read, with the exception of Atari Force, showing my age. But, no, seriously, this was uh, the very first comic book, and in has very little to do with the video game, yeah. Uh, other than a few scenes. But man, I wasn't expecting this. I, so I guess I was, jump in though. Yeah, this yeah. is written by Max Bemis. Now I've talked about this book a few different times in a few different videos. And I don't think I've oh. ever said his name correctly. But Max Bemis, Mac Bemis, I'm not sure. Max, you did amazing work. I apologize he did, for my uh, pronunciation. X, X Men, Uncanny X Men, uh, worst X Men ever. Mm -hmm. And artist Eon Marin. Again, I'm probably butchering your name, but just know I very much appreciate the work of both of you. I'm glad I'm not the only one that butchers names. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so Centipede, man, this was like a trip and a half. This was such a unique story because I, I I finished it and I loved it, and I was like, wait a second, how do I describe this book to anyone? Man versus Centipede. Pretty much. Last Man Standing yeah. versus Centipede. So, it's the story of Dale Trail, who is a... I, I always thought he was a human. I mean, I guess he could be a well, humanoid I guess alien, but I he's thought... He's on a, a, a planet that is very similar to Earth. So, it, it collects looks like memory. Earth to us, you it, know? He collects... And he references pop culture, Earth pop culture, too, like video games and things like yeah, that. That's so why I thought he was in his Earth world, like... you know, it looks kind of like Earth, but his society is a little bit different. And we get this, we get this sort of impression, because we don't know exactly, right? But we get this impression that his Earth is just, I, I would say, very collectivist as a whole. Oh, okay. And very, yeah. like, focused on progress. And then you have our main character, who feels kind of lost and feel like he doesn't make sense there. You know, he has like a radio program, right? <laughs> yeah, and he's... And he, he's able to use satellites to get media from other planets. But he's specifically focused on our Earth. And so we have this weird thing where we see this person who looks like he's, he's in our society. Right. But he's not. He's very far removed. But he's very much um, involved and into our social media and movies and games and everything Video else games, mainly. yeah so he is what well, yeah uh, i guess the premise of the story is that this giant centipede comes and eats everyone in his little planet he is stuck yeah. in a bunker for weeks and this is what i really enjoyed right off the bat so he's talking to somebody right um dell is and he and it turns out that he's talking to the reader he's talking to mm -hmm. you because he's lost his mind, there's no one to talk to. And I thought that was such a unique way of getting dialogue in there. Because this really could have been nothing but thought bubbles of like, oh, I gotta get this damn thing, I gotta yeah. blow it up, this is what I'm gonna do. But no, instead he's telling you his plan, he's telling you, you know, a little bit about his past, which is really heartbreaking. That's what bought, like, that's what got me, was his past. Because without going in, into spoilers, you know, but there's love and lost and acceptance and just, oh man, it was so good. And then he's got to survive and kill this centipede who yeah. has not just giant centipede, I want to fucking eat you powers, but he also throws like little bugs at, at him and he has to take them out. Oh, it's so good. It was I fun it. too. It's just like, you know, you've got this all powerful centipede that's like destroyed all of humanity. But then... You know, our main characters very much learn how to deal with these. Like, the centipede's not smart, you know? No. And he knows how to maneuver. He can't kill him, really. But that's kind of what's interesting about their relationship. Because he's got an anger towards him. He's a very unlikely survivor. And he he's very not likable at first, but he grows on you. Yeah. And I don't know why... Uh, because he's one of those people that just, I, I wouldn't want to hang around because he's such a negative Nancy, but he so grows on you. 
And then... And you really appreciate, like, at some point you kind of identify and appreciate both the man and the centipede. Which I think was the point, right? Yeah, because I really, you, I care about both of them. <laughs> especially when you get to one issue, because uh, you don't, you start not noticing what's real, what, what's not. Yeah. Like, you, you kind of, and I asked myself at the very end, and I want to talk to you about this, because this is a spoiler for reviews in a flash always is, but, you know, what happened at the end? Like, maybe I took it this way, maybe it means this. And so it's very weird. But his daydreams are amazing. At, at a certain point in this, you really don't know what's real or not. And even, you know, at, towards the end when I finished it, I was like, well, I can kind of describe what happened. But I don't really have a good grasp on what's real or not. And I and I like that. This is a one-shot, by the way. This is just... Oh, yeah. It's absolutely. all self-contained. All and here. I think Diamond does a really good job of producing self-contained one-shot stories that are very unique. Because this is very unique. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything else like that I've read or consumed recently. Like, this would be a really good Black Mirror episode. I'm saying that about a lot of comics lately, but this is <laughs> this is for sure. What did you think of the artwork by Aeon Marron? I liked it. I liked. It. I thought it was very interesting. I thought they did a really good job of like. I don't know. Describe. It feels a little rough. It feels rough. Yeah. Like, in in a weird eighties Simon Beasley kind of way, and yeah, yeah, yeah almost right. like a um, Venture Brothers type of style, a little bit to me. Okay, I can very see that. angular. Yeah, and the facial expressions are just ridiculous. Yeah, uh, and the the centipede himself, it looks like a giant. Freaking centipede. Man, you're so. lucky we aren't spoiling this, you guys, because there's a part that Omar and I both can't talk about to you that is hilarious oh, yeah. and weird, and I still don't understand it. I like and to I, think I I'm smarter. I'm dying to talk about it, but than, we'll have to do, about it, do it another show. Yeah, I like to think that I'm smart enough to figure it out, but at the end of the day, I'm like, uh, maybe this is what it means to me, and it means something else to somebody else. But and the light looks like I love that. the colors. That was the other thing I really like. Oh, the colors are beautiful. Uh, they're done by Chris O'Halloran. So mm -hmm. a lot of neon. It feels like you're like sitting in a halogen room. <laughs> you know, it just feels like an old arcade, which I appreciate. And I guess that was the point. Because yeah. there, okay, I, I don't want to spoil much, but there is a scene in here where he's trying to trap the centipede, and it looks like the arcade, mm -hmm. like the old classic arcade where you shoot him up. So I would strongly recommend it. And oh, you yeah. as well? Absolutely. What would you rate it then out of our yeah. five point system? You know, we rate a lot of things, but every rating for every kind of thing is just different. This is of a course. very different kind of book than other books we read. Um, I would give it a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10? Okay. If not a 10 out of 10, honestly, it could be a 10 well, out of 10. I was going with it's, a 5 it's system, so. It's wonderful you, for you... what it is. 5 out of 5. I'm just going to go. You know How what? did you go from 9 out of 10 to 5 out of 5? Because. Your math is off. Well, a 10 out of 10 is also a 5 out of 5. Yeah, I know how math works. So it's pretty like close. That. So a 4.5 4, 4. out of 5. I don't sound anything like that, but that's what I'm giving it. A 4.5 out of 5. It's really good. I just it's, wish the art was a little tighter. It's fantastic. Like you said, it's rough around the edges. I like that. I wouldn't have any other way. Uh, okay, I, I can and see I that. And I think this is great for its genre. I think, like, this is the kind of thing I want to continue to see out of this genre okay. of comic book. I just want Atari like, Force back. And that's going to be badass if they do it like this. I don't even know who owns the rights to that stuff anymore. Uh, so, 5 out of 5. 4.5 out of 5. From the Mighty Batty and the Uncanny Omar. Is that it? Yeah. That's all I've got to say about it. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Thank you for watching. God and if you've read this, comment below and let us know if you like it. Oh, that's um, a good one, yeah. And, yeah, I hope that you stick in for future videos. If you have a recommendation for a book that's similar to this... Let us know. I'd love to check it out. Yeah, and, thank and remember, you. if it's classy and cool, it must be near men.